It's Hong Nara's wedding day, and she's marrying a guy she has only been dating for two months. Meanwhile, her ex-boyfriend, Zhang Yol, who broke up with her a while back, regrets his actions and now he's drinking himself into a stupor, crying his eyes out and making a ruckus in the bar where he's drinking with his friends. He finally decides he will go get her back and staggers towards the door, when suddenly the door flings open and thunder strikes. Horror fills their eyes as Nara stands right in front of the door, wearing her wedding dress. She coldly tells him to pay the taxi driver for her cab fare, and he obeys her without questions. After paying for her cab, he kneels and pleads for her to take him back. Well, Nara smiles at him, and she officially runs away from her wedding. The next day, Zhang Yol goes on lunch with Dobo Bei, Nara's mother, so she can get to know the man who made her daughter run away from her wedding. Bo Bei is not impressed that he has no job. He's studying for a lawyer's license, and he has no savings at all. So, she offers him some money for the wedding preparations and asks him to move into Nara's apartment as long as he can persuade Nara's father, Hong Jong-gun, to allow him to marry their daughter. It's a tough challenge for Zhang Yol, as Zhang Gun is a military general, and he threatens to shoot Zhang Yol for daring to ask for his daughter's hand in marriage. It takes a lot of screaming and effort before he finally agrees to the wedding. Unlike the first wedding Nara ran away from, her wedding with Zhang Yol is only an intimate ceremony, just in case she wants to run again. Presently, the once upon a time lovebirds are now more like enemies. Zhang Yol is practicing law full time while Nara is a movie producer. They started hating each other after living together. Now, they decided to get a divorce. How suddenly a once sweet love can turn into a sour pill. At the Eastern District Court, Zhang Yol speaks about how she referred to him as unemployed because he was broke and didn't have money at the time. Nara, on the other hand, complains about how his family has inferiority issues simply because she's from a rich family especially Ju Suk Jong, his mother, who will always attribute everything she does to her being rich. The divorce mediation committee lawyers listen to them, as they both roll out the long lists of offenses the other has committed, and even the time both of them allegedly cheated by going out for dinner with their colleagues. There was even this time when Nara almost burnt down the house because she slept off while cooking, the same day that he had to take his bar exam. Too many flaws that they don't want to let go of. They have no significant excuse as to why they want a divorce, however mediators can tell that their minds are made up already, so they grant the couple a month to reconcile before their divorce will be finalized. Zhang Yol is excited, he can't wait already as he sets his alarms for D-Day, when he'll be free from his marriage to Nara. One will mistake his excitement as though he just won the lottery. They get in their car as Zhang Yol wants to be dropped off in his office. Nara asks why he didn't tell her when he decided to get a divorce on the day of his exam. In a bid to annoy her more, instead of answering her questions, Zhang Yol starts mimicking her, and they start another bout of argument and fight until he crashes into a bus at high speed. Could this be the end of their dramatic story? The both of them wake up in the hospital, and they are surrounded by their families. Their families rush towards them seeing that their eyes are opened, and Zhang Yol's mom does not hesitate to blame Nara for it. Both sides of the family get into an argument as Zhang Gun refers to his son-in-law as a beggar. Zhang Yol breaks the silence by asking his own mother who she is. Both families panic and quickly get the doctor who diagnoses the couple and informs their parents that they are both suffering from dissociative amnesia. He explains that it's just like in the movies where the lead actor forgets all about the people in his life and some events. He informs them that their children will recover if they get hit in the head or get involved in an accident that will jolt back their memories. One of the nurses breaks the news of their marriage to them and they are both surprised to find out that they are a couple. Later, Zhang Yol takes a stroll outside to get some fresh air. He scrolls through his phone and he's amazed to see how good he and Nara look in their wedding picture. A stone hits his head and he's wondering where it comes from. He takes a look around, wondering why a stone will just fall from a tree. While he's still pondering on how he got hit, another stone hits him straight on his head, and he instantly faints. The culprits come running towards him, and his dad yells at his mom for choosing a stone as big as the second one. Zhang Yol wakes up in the hospital and Suk Jung is just eager to find out if he can now recognize her as his mother. He still doesn't recall them as his parents. A doctor who has been listening to his parents arguing about the size of the stone, offers to call the police if Jong Yeol wants him to. The young doctor is willing to report a case of domestic violence on Jong Yeol's behalf. Funny fellow. Later in the day, Jong Yeol calls for Nara's attention. He asks if she might just know what the 15th of next month is, because he had set an alarm for it, so he believes it's an important date. Nara suggests that it might be their wedding anniversary, as she also doesn't have an idea. Nara's younger sister Nami breaks their thought line and reveals that it's their divorce's upcoming divorce date, 
as the court has given them one month to reconsider their divorce. They are in shock, wondering why they'll want to divorce and Nami further talks about how they are always fighting each other. She suggests it will be best that they separate rather than end each other. At the doctor's office, Bo Bei and Suk Jong are being informed of their children's discharge date. He realizes that the women are thinking of separating their children, so, he advises them to put the couple in the same environment, as it will help them in stimulating their memories, unlike when they are separated from each other. Bo Bei seems interested in wanting her daughter's recovery, and she's willing to try out everything possible if her daughter will regain her memories again. She speaks to Suk Jong outside the doctor's office and suggests they heed the doctor's advice, which will benefit both their children. The dramatic Suk Jong wants to make an issue out of it, and Bo Bei informs her that she has no issues with the divorce, as she will be sending Nara abroad right after. So, Suk Jong and her family might be the ones to regret the divorce after all. These women are like cat and mouse. They bicker a little, even though Bo Bei is quite calm and controlled. They finally reach an agreement to help their children regain their memories, and then ultimately divorce for the good of all. The couple gets discharged from the hospital and Bo Bei drives them home. She tells her younger daughter to take care of her sister, but Nami doesn't want to live with Nara and her husband. She fears they might just do something crazy, so she suggests her mother take Nara to an asylum, or she might as well take care of her since she's her daughter. Now, Nara and Zhang Yol have been listening to Nami badmouth them. They remind Nami that they are in the vehicle, and her words aren't nice at all. Meanwhile, Bo Bei concentrates on her driving, and maintains her cool, even though it looks like she's trying so hard not to let out how she feels. Nara informs her mother that she doesn't even want to live with Zhang Yol because he is not her type, and he might end up pushing her over suddenly. Zhang Yol scoffs because just like Nami, she's saying unpleasant words about him in his presence. Bo Bei informs them that the decision has been made by both parents, so it will be to their benefit if they just obey. They eventually arrive at the couple's apartment, and thankfully, Bo Bei still remembers the passcode for the security lock. They all get inside, and they are puzzled to see how disorganized the house is. Bottles of alcohol littered everywhere, and the horrible smell oozed out of the apartment. Nara thinks her husband is responsible for the empty bottles, but her sister reminds her that she drinks a lot. The couple stands facing their wedding picture hanging on the wall, and they can truly feel the murderous intent judging from the damage done to the innocent frame. Bo Bei soon takes her leave, but before that, she gives Nami a stern instruction to keep an eye on the couple so they don't begin fighting once again. Immediately after her mother leaves, Nami instructs the couple to clean up their messy house. She orders them around yelling continuously, because she feels they are not cleaning the house well. Nara soon loses her cool, and shouts at her for complaining instead of joining them since she's spotting all the places covered in dust. Once they are done cleaning, they have dinner, and Nami makes sure to act like she's the one who just got discharged, hence she's entitled to all the meals. While eating, she tries to get on Nara's nerves, and her sister doesn't realize when she acts on impulse hitting Nami with the drumstick she's holding. Zhang Yol is shocked at how she'll hit someone so hard, but Nami is grateful because that's the least among the many things her sister can do to her. It's nighttime and Nami makes sure to do her work well. Zhang Yol wakes up to go pee but he meets a shocker as Nami is standing right there watching him like some ghost. She startles him and warns him not to think of going into Nara's room. She advises him to buy a chamber pot and then turns around to leave so he can go pee. Nara's family puts up an event to help the couple recover their memories. A gathering of people who will remind the couple about certain events from their past. Zhang Gun makes a shooting gesture to Zhang Yol, thinking it'll remind him of the time he was threatening to shoot him. Zhang Yol mistakes his gestures as a love signal. He responds by smiling and whispers to Nara about how kind her parents are. Both families arrange to meet with several people the couple has come across, hoping it'll help jolt back their memories. Everyone takes turns but neither Nara nor Zhang Yol can recall any memories of them. Later, Zhang Yol goes to use the men's room, and his friends Bei Qi Bei and Aeom Kui Dong join him. They tell him stories to stimulate his memory like how he became friends with Ki Bei, who was working at a pub in Gangnam some time back. Zhang Yol listens attentively to the story of how Ki Bei had matchmade him with Nara in the pub years ago. After scaring her away, Zhang Yol saves her from choking and takes her to the hospital. That's not when they start dating, because Nara gets involved in a relationship with a doctor at that hospital. About two months later, they meet again, and Zhang Yol saves her again, this time from the rain. Nara stands in the rain after being pushed off by other passengers who are hurrying to get on the bus. After Zhang Yol comes to the rescue, his friends give them a ride and that's when he requests to go on a friendly date with her and he makes the request on a baseball. Back to the present, the same story is being shared with Nara by her friends and she can't believe she asked to have his number. She hopes she isn't the one who made the first call. 
After the event, their mothers take them to see a hypnotic therapist. The woman hypnotizes them and observes the memories they have. It seems to work, because Jong Yol starts seeing flashes of the accident. After the session the therapist makes them reveal how they currently feel about each other. Bo Bei and Suk Jong return to the doctor's office to give him feedback about the efforts they are making to help their children regain their memories. As suggested by the doctor to help stimulate their brains, Nara arrives at her place of work as well, Jong Yol. He walks into his boss's office carefully avoiding other colleagues, since he can't recognize anybody, he assumes the cleaner pretending to be lawyer Kang Dong Wan is his boss. The cleaner starts conversing with him knowing that Jong Yol cannot recognize him. Mr. Kang soon comes and excuses the cleaner who scurries out of his office. Jong Yol sits there looking confused and wondering if Mr. Kang is truly the lawyer representative or the cleaner. Fortunately, Mr. Kang permits him to take care of his health first and then come back to work when he's fully okay. At the couple's apartment later that evening, everyone is doing their own thing. Nami is practicing some songs with her guitar, while Jong Yol and Nara are separately working on some stuff. He steals a look at Nara and wonders why he even asked for a divorce. Nara catches his gaze and giggles to herself cutely. She thinks he's still cute and she doesn't even realize when she says it out loud to Jong Yol's hearing. He makes her repeat her statement until she shyly walks into her room. A new day comes, and they have just 10 days left until their divorce date. Jong Yol walks into the bathroom to clean up, and Nara walks into him brushing. He hands her the toothpaste, and Nara's attention seems to have been caught by something else as she puts excess paste on her brush. Jong Yol wonders what the problem could be until he realizes that she's staring at his body. Nara must have definitely seen something quite attractive. Jong Yol screams, and she quickly runs out of the bathroom. He rinses his body and scampers straight to his room. He pauses to pick up his trousers, which Nami is observing on the floor then proceeds to his room while his sister-in-law is wondering what's going on. Later in the day while Jong Yol is reading some textbook, he catches the sight of Nara eating some strawberries and stares at her with admiration while she's working on a script. Nara sees him staring and he immediately feigns having a headache. He suddenly stands on his feet saying he just remembered something. They decide to visit the doctor to inform him of the new developments, and the doctor is puzzled as to why the only thing Jong Yol remembers is when he was on the bed and eating strawberries. He realizes that sexual instincts must have stimulated Jong Yol's brain, so he advises them to engage in some sexual activities since they are a couple. The doctor admonishes them to participate more actively in the activities their moms engage them with because it's helping them in the recovery process. They get back home just in time for dinner, and it seems Jong Yol is developing a soft spot for Nara. Nami laughs weirdly seeing how he adds an extra piece of meat to Nara's plate. Later that night, they are all in bed in their separate rooms, and Jong Yol decides to text Nara. He requests for them to go to a baseball game while reminding her that the doctor said they need to cooperate. Jong Yol doesn't want her to think it's a date, but it is in the real sense, or is it not? Anyway, Nara replies to him agreeing to it. But it's quite amusing that the couple actually named each other doomed and stupid in their phones. The following day the couple leaves the house without telling Nami what's going on. She watches each of them leave, and she wonders what could be going on. While on their date, they both wonder what could have led to them hating each other. Jung Yeol thinks that they can start over if they can't figure out why they are having issues. A man tells them that the field is closed for the day. Nara suggests they go have some pasta, while Jung Yeol wants bibimbap. They eat it together by the walkway, and afterwards, they go to a nice restaurant to have some drinks and it seems they are really getting along. On their way home, it starts raining and they shield themselves with an umbrella. They hold each other's gaze for a few minutes in what looks like a moment of romance. Nara suddenly gets some good memories and in a split second, she grabs his tie and kisses him. When she regains herself, she gives him a hard slap which shocks the both of them. Jong Yol wonders why she had to slap him when she kissed him first, and he only reciprocated for a few seconds. Nara apologizes because she truly did kiss him first. She explains that something inside of her triggered her actions and requests that he slap her back, but he refuses. So, she suggests they get more drinks before heading home. It seems their love life is truly undergoing a reset. They head to Kibe's bar and meet Kuidong there. Soon Cheon Aok, a friend of Kibe and Kuidong comes to join them, and they all sit by the bar drinking and chatting. Nara and Jung Yol are acting cozy to the extent that Kibe thinks it'll be best if they just live like that and abandon the divorce process. Seeing how loving they look, the others start cheering the couple to have a love shot. There's no escaping for the duo, so they pass the drinks around each other's necks while hugging and then gulp down the shot. To everyone's surprise, after the shot, the duo switches from a hug to kissing each other hungrily. At this rate, they might just have a baby and live happily ever after like in fairy tales. 
Minutes later, Aok and the other two step outside the bar with long faces to give the couple some privacy as they could not stop making out. Then, their other friends also join them outside as they could not stand the sight of the lovebirds being so passionate with each other. The following morning, Nami is at home updating her mom about Nara and jong Yol, who spent the night outside the house and their lines have been unreachable. The door soon opens and she quickly runs over. jong Yol comes in and invites his friends inside. She asks where her sister is, and jong Yol pretends to not know. After a few seconds, Nara arrives, pretending she also met with her friends last night. They all take their seats having fun and making merry as they like. Nami who is lost with what is happening keeps her mom updated on the current activities in the house. With just five days left until their divorce, the couple is engaging in some serious intimate activities. Nara already finds him attractive and adorable, so it's not a bother to her, and she's enjoying every bit of this romance. Nami comes back home furious, complaining about a club owner, who has spoken to her rudely when she hears some noise coming from the bedroom. She picks up a baseball and flings the door open, only to find her sister and jong Yol in a passionate moment. Nami apologizes and slowly walks back out. The couple looks stunned and they get agitated hearing Nami call her mom and report that Nara and her husband are having a course. jong Yol jumps out of bed and races towards Nami. He accidentally steps on the baseball and lands on the ground with a heavy thud. He gets up and acts like he has lost his senses for a few minutes before losing consciousness again. jong Yol finally opens his eyes in the hospital. He sees his friends around him, but he seems to be too lost for words to even speak to anybody. After he's discharged, Bobe comes to visit them. She reminds jong Yol that he's supposed to be preparing for a divorce with Nara and not having a course with her. She informs him that he can remain in the apartment, but Nara will have to go with her because she will be responsible for their divorce moving forward. She shuts her daughter up from saying anything, while jong Yol just stares at her without a word. Maybe he has regained his memory, but he's now in love with his wife again. On the ride to the house, Bobe informs Nara that she'll be leaving for her studies abroad immediately after the divorce. She shuts Nara up from even saying anything in jong Yol's defense, and reminds her of how she supported their marriage, even when everyone was against it. It brings tears to her eyes as she tells her daughter how unhappy she was in the marriage and how it broke her heart to see her go through those hard times. As a mother, she can't bear to watch all of that happen again, thinking that if they go on with their relationship, they will just start clamoring for a divorce all over again when her memories come back. Later that evening, jong Yeol comes back from drinking outside. He sees Nara sitting outside the apartment, and from the way he stares at her, she can feel his hatred towards her. She instantly knows that he has regained his memory. The both of them sit on the chair outside to talk for a little bit. Nara feels he's lucky to have regained his memory, unlike her. Let's hope this will not be the sad ending of this couple's marriage. The next day happens to be the exact day of their divorce. Both of them walk out of the court after their divorce has been processed. jong Yol feels the verdict is quite fast, even though they waited 30 days for it to come. Nara simply bids him goodbye and gets into the car waiting for her. jong Yol stares at the car as it moves away with sadness written all over his face. He gets back home to the apartment which he once lived in with his wife, who is now his ex-wife. He picks up the baseball on the floor and realizes it's the one Nara picked up at the baseball court. He recalls a few memories of the beautiful time he spent together with Nara, when both of them were oblivious to the things that made them opt for a divorce. jong Yol turns the ball and finds Nara's writing on it. She wrote that she wishes they'll never recover their memories. Once again, he feels immense regret as it is too late now. Later that evening, Nara, her mother, and her sister are packing up some of her things for her trip abroad. While they are talking, Bobe can see the unhappiness in her daughter's eyes, so she decides to stop by Nara's house the next day. When she gets there, she finds jong Yol and his friends packing his things from the apartment. She asks him to pack immediately and gives him a grace period until Nara's flight goes abroad. She also gives him details of her daughter's flight. She wants them to meet up one last time before Nara leaves the country. Later that evening, jong Yol and his friends sit on the floor to have dinner. His friend tells him that his divorce is invalid as long as he has not yet declared it per the council's standard. Kibai seems like the romantic among them. He assures them to keep still, as this is the climax of jong Yol's love story. He asks jong Yol to close his eyes and think of all the good moments spent with Nara. Unfortunately, jong Yol thinks about both the good and the bad moments with Nara, and now, he feels irritated. He gets up and dashes out to the airport with his friends running behind him. Immediately they arrive at the airport. jong Yol and his friends sprint until they get to where Nara and her friends are standing. He arrives just in time as they are about to bid her a safe flight. 
Jong Yeol walks up to her and apologizes for always being late. He recounts the time he was supposed to kiss her for the first time, when she was almost taken away by another man, when he was studying hard for the lawyer's examination, and once again, now. Jong Yeol apologizes for everything, and explains how he read somewhere that it's better to divorce when you're getting more bad memories than good ones, and how he thought that's why they're getting divorced. He admits that he didn't realize how precious she is to him and how much he loves her, which was why the bad memories trapped him. After saying all his apologies, Nara takes off her earpods and suddenly, their friends who have been waiting for the romantic apology to end with a kiss, get disappointed. Jong Yeol starts all over again, but Nara cuts him and bids him goodbye, then walks towards the departure section. They all stand there in disappointment, and the girls are quarreling with Jong Yeol for not calling Nara earlier or even sending her a text message. His friends take him along with them and comfort him, only to find their vehicle being towed away for parking in the wrong space. Kibai and Kuidong run after the vehicle while Tako leads Jong Yeol to get a cab. Suddenly, Nara's voice calls him back. She asks to speak with him privately and expresses that it is unfair for her not to get a chance to file for a divorce, so, she wants them to get back together until she regains her memories. Afterward, she'll get a chance to file for a divorce as well and then declare it after three months. Jong Yeol smiles because that's all he wants for now at least. He begs her to seal it with a kiss, and Nara feigns she's not interested, as they finally come together for a kiss. 90 days later, Nami comes home with a strange-looking guy. She introduces him to her parents as the man she'll want to marry, and her mom and dad are not taking it lightly with her. Her dad rushes inside to get his gun so he can do the needful as usual. It seems dating broke boys is now the new trend.